Howdy guys, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plaster. My son Jason and I are going to show you guys how today to plaster a terracotta wall. Uh, terracotta, they don't really use this for structural walls anymore. Uh, I'm not certain if they ever did. I see a lot of three foot ones, but this one is uh, 16 feet tall and, and it's hollow too. I'll show you how I know it's hollow. Well, I tapped on it. I can hear the sound. I know what I'm hearing, and that's hollow. Here, you know, I can stick my finger in there, and, and if I didn't have gloves, no, I wouldn't stick my finger in there. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is the fellow here says, well, gee, Kirk, I worked for him quite a bit of times. Uh, i give you his name, too. We're in Alameda. The fellow's name is, is Jack Wilton, of course, but his telephone number is 521 seven four eight nine jw construction a master's master as far as construction i've been working for him for 30 over 30 years you name it he does it he fixes everything anyhow getting back to what we're doing he said kirk what do you recommend on it and i said well if it were my wall instead of portland cement which has a, a strength level of 15 to 28 psi uh, i said i'd use a rapid set on this because it's fragile stuff to begin with and they rebuilt the other side of the wall, restructured it and all that. But this, I mean, if you're a kid with a baseball bat, we're at an apartment building. Kid with a baseball bat, somebody backs their boat up, you want it really strong. So we're going to use a rapid set uh, cement stucco on this guy here. And the difference is, yeah, it, when it's fully cured after 28 days, I believe it's 4,000 PSI strength. So it's a lot stronger. What we're doing here is I'm, I'm applying the weld crete, and a lot of times, if you've watched any of our other how-to videos, you'll see us applying this bonding agent, and we're applying it over houses that we're going to put a color coat, and I usually dilute it. Something like this, I want full strength. When we go concrete to concrete, stucco to stucco, we want full strength with the weld crete. And yes, why do I prefer weld crete? Because you can see it, it's blue. If I use some of the white glues, which I'm not complaining about them, but you have a tendency, unless you can see, you don't see the sheen, you can miss spots, and we don't want to miss spots. Even this, when it dries, it's going to leave a, a sheen. So what we're doing is we're starting off, we're going to put some six-footers here, extensions on that, two plank that top off, and start from the top. It's a lot of work up there, so Jason and I are probably, when we get down to this level, show you how to scratch and brown. Skim it is what it's called. I'm going to skim it about seven eighths of an inch thick to give it some really structural strength. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and get busy and set all this uh, scaffold up, finish rolling it all out, and when we get ready to put that rapid set strong stucco on it, we'll show you that part too. Okay guys, quick tip. Jason says, Dad, how come these bricks are thinner and these are fatter? I didn't even notice that myself. And he says, are these supposed to be scratched? So of course he's got Google on his phone. He Googled Dickey's partition tile. Now, what that is, is Jay just explained it to me. And no, I don't know everything about all these different bricks and tiles and all that jazz. But they started in Oakland. We're in Alameda, Oakland, California. 1913. They got real popular in the 20s. Uh, 29. <laughs> don't figure. It's a uh, recession. So people started doing a little bit cheaper. Um, hard times. Anyhow, I thought that was kind of interesting that Jay caught that as far as the, the, the grout lines uh, or looks to be a scratch coat and the difference of, a, of the brick. Uh, we've taken it all the way to the top. You can show that we've glued everything. Um, if any of you folks out there watching what we do, we do this channel almost weekly, have an idea why they would, me, I would think if they're going to pyramid it, Type, put the big ones on the bottom and the small ones on the top. Why is it? Anybody know? Uh, again, uh, Jay says, why, why is it, Dad? I said, man, how old do you think I am? This is 1920s. Anyhow, we're going to get started with the plaster work. Okay, guys, another tip. The fellow Jack, when he put this board on here, this terracotta is very wavy. Some areas we got an inch and a half. Some areas we got it on the, the terracotta. What I generally do is I'll scratch it and granted I'm scratching this whole job and then browning it and no I'm not putting the scratch marks in it but I, that just means I'm putting the first coat so right here the camera should show that it's 
we're about an inch and a half and I'm feathering everything in. So now I'll show you over here a little bit. And remember, if we got any towel guys from, from the past, you guys can tell me why they're using these shorter ones and then they have the thicker ones on. I'd surely like to know. Jason and I have come up with a whole bunch of scenarios why. But okay. I don't know the exact reason. Sure would like to. Anyhow, what we're doing here is all I'm doing is I'm scratching everything first. I didn't show you the top because there's always somebody who's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna do like old Kirk did and climb way up there and kill himself. So we don't want that. Anyway, on this bottom here, this is just a scratch coat. And the follow-up coat is like that, where we put, we're, we're roughly a quarter inch to an inch and a half with everything. And we're feathering it all in to make it as true and plumb as possible. So this is just the first coat right here. And I'm taking it into the coat here where I put my two coats on it and then my below here, it's a little thinner so it can accept the second one. And after I get this first coat, I'll show you. I can double this up. I'll put another one on it. So I'll come up here and just put a, the second coat on it, guys. This is setting pretty well, so just for the sake of showing you the second coat, follow me. Uh, throw a couple more on here. See the first one's on. Now the second one. And you really got to know your cement if you're going to try to do two coats in the same spot. But this is a cementitious product we're going over, so it's sucking the water right out of this stuff here. And of course, I'm going to use my two-handle serrated derby to make these walls a little truer, a little plumber. But you guys get the idea. And when we get to the stage of uh, floating this, I'll show you that part too, because you only need uh, to see what we're doing here. And all this over here, this just has this, the first coat. I put two coats here, and the Darby will straighten all, out all the rest. When I, what I want to do is make it fat and ugly, and then I'll come back and hit it with the Darby. Okay guys, we're at the stage now where it's a hot wall, we're finishing up, and what, what I'm just basically doing is using up the rest of the cement on this board. We made a little extra, about a bucket or two. Make a little extra, just put it on the wall. It's not going to hurt that wall, especially if you know how to feather in. I know how to feather in pretty well because that's what we do. So why throw all this good, expensive stucco away when I can just utilize it, put it on here, and make it part of the strength. Okay, when you got this done, Take a Darby, called call different names anywhere in the world, and you just kind of make it true and plumb. Just take it. Of course, when I worked Union, I did this eight hours a day, every day for a couple years, so you get to get pretty good at it. And the idea is we're gonna float it. See up there? That's done, it's floated. Uh, when we get to the floating stage, lastly, we'll show you that too. But if you guys said, gee, I want to see a video that you guys have done with just floating or just texturing, just go to our channel, type that word in, and that video usually will come up. Say if you were looking for how to do Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish, go to our channel, type in Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish. The owner was asking me about this tree. He said, man, how are you going to get behind it? No problem. We take our Darby, bring it here, and just wrap it around that's how we get behind the tree then we continue doing this we're in the hot sun now so it, we're using a product that sets fast so we got to go level to level this product is fastest setting anyhow uh, in about 15 minutes we're going to start floating this i'll show you that lastly guys okay guys i saved a little bit of spot left for floating just to show you how we do this now this is a green sponge float and it brings the aggregate out. In concrete, that's rocks, uh, various sizes. In stucco, it's sand, so I'm bringing the aggregate out. This is a sand finish. And so, there you have it. 
I dip a float in here, tap it like that, dip it, flip it around, tap it like that, and I'm hitting the side of the bucket to keep this float curved right. If I do this, I mess it up. I can hit it lightly, but we don't want to kink, kink this out of proportion. Anyhow, uh, as I said earlier, if you really wanted long, drawn-out videos of how to do any of these, you just search our site and type in that title. This is just to show you how to correct terracotta and what I would do if it were my own house. Anyhow, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering, Jason on the camera as usual. We thank you folks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.